Latin style French toast and syrup, torrejas en almíbar, a sweet treat that's just a little more exotic than your regular French toast. Sally that girl in the kitchen. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. In today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how to make Latin style French toast in syrup, torrejas en almíbar. So these torrejas are so delicious. And of course, they're slightly reminiscent to what we are used to eating in the US that you make with really any type of bread, Hala, brioche, whatever you prefer. But in this particular type of torreja, we're going to be using a French style baguette and we're gonna be adding another secret little ingredient into the mix and then we are going to cook them up. But instead of serving them with maple syrup, we're gonna be creating our own special syrup that's gonna be infused with some incredible aromatics, including some anise estrellado or star anise or anise. Oh my goodness, and some cinnamon and some lemon peel. It's gonna be super flavorful. And this is something that you can serve really at any time, but it's also great for a brunch because you can prepare the torrejas and the syrup ahead of time then warm up those torrejas, pour that delicious syrup on top, and you have a great meal. So I am super excited to teach you how to make these. So let's not wait another second, and let's get started. For the syrup part of today's recipe, you will need one and a half cups of water, two cups of sugar, one cinnamon stick, one star anise or star anise, and two strips of lemon peel. For the Latin style French toast part or the torreja part of today's recipe, you will need one French style baguette, preferably a day or two old because they hold up better, but if it's fresh, that's fine too. Three large eggs, one and a half cups of whole milk, a half a cup of white wine, yep, white wine, two tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of cinnamon powder, a pinch of fresh ground nutmeg, three tablespoons of vegetable oil, plus another two tablespoons separate. So my guess is that most French toast you've made before, you've likely done in butter, but for this type of torreja, we go with a light oil. It could be a vegetable oil, canola oil, or even an olive oil if you're not afraid of going just slightly savory. You will also need a cutting board and a knife, preferably a bread knife, but any knife will do, a paring knife, some measuring spoons, a zester or a fine grater, a standard nine by 13 baking dish, a spatula, some wet measuring cups, some dry measuring cups, a large bowl, and a serving fork and a serving spoon. You'll also need a nicely sized skillet with plenty of surface area and a small pot to make your syrup. So now that we have all of our ingredients and tools together, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is measure out one and a half cups of water and then you're going to add that to your small pot. And then you're going to bring over two cups of sugar and you're gonna add that right in. And then you're gonna grab one cinnamon stick and we're gonna place that in. That's gonna be one of our beautiful aromatics, gives us a lot of flavor. Then you're gonna bring over a star anise or anise, absolutely beautiful. I love how it looks and it tastes amazing. And then you're gonna grab one fresh, beautiful lemon and carefully remove two strips of lemon peel. Just try to get the yellow part, try to get as little of the white pith as possible and just add those two strips right in and then grab your serving spoon or a spatula, wooden spoon, whatever your preferred utensil is and give it all 
a nice stir just to kind of get those ingredients to start to combine. So this syrup could not be any easier. We just stir it all together. Then we're gonna turn our stove on. We're gonna set it to low and we're gonna let this come together and form a syrup. So it should take about 15 minutes. It's gonna start to bubble. It's gonna start to thicken up and it's gonna be absolutely delicious. So now while our syrup is cooking, we're gonna grab our large bowl and into the bowl, we're gonna crack three large eggs. So once my eggs are in the bowl, then what I like to do is grab my serving fork and I beat the eggs really well. I use a serving fork because I'm gonna use it as a tool to put my torrejas in my pan, so I may as well just use one fork to do it all. So don't forget to come over every once in a while and take a look at how your syrup is doing and then just give it all a little stir. Now that it's getting warm, the sugar is starting to dissolve. So I like to just come in and just stir all those beautiful aromatics around. They're really gonna flavor this syrup and it's just gonna be so, so tasty and so different. I'm sure you're gonna absolutely love it. So going back to our eggs, we beat them. Now we're gonna add our one and a half cups of whole milk right on top of that. Then we're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar, not too much because our syrup is very sweet. And we're gonna add a teaspoon of cinnamon powder. And then we're gonna add some fresh ground nutmeg. If you don't have fresh nutmeg, then of course you can just go with a pinch of the ground nutmeg, but I love grinding it myself. And then we're gonna add our half a cup of white wine. You wanna add a wine that you would drink. Don't use a cooking wine, just make sure it's any wine that you have left over. Just make sure it's a drinking wine as opposed to a cooking wine, which they tend to add a lot of salt to and you don't want that. And then just come in with your same fork and give all of the ingredients a nice mix. We just wanna bring everything together, make sure to incorporate that cinnamon into our mixture. Just beat it all really well with a fork. So now I'm gonna set this mixture aside for a moment. I'm gonna go back and check on my syrup and look at how beautiful it's bubbly. The scent is so crazy good. It smells like some type of cinnamon holiday candle, the lemon peel, the star anise, all of it together. It just smells absolutely divine so we're gonna let this simmer for about 15 minutes in total and then in the meantime we're gonna grab our beautiful baguette and what i like to do is i like to remove the ends because torrejas are typically cut on an angle and so i just remove that little end and then i take my bread knife and i just cut my bread on an angle and i'm just making these beautiful slices of French bread. So as I said earlier, you definitely want a bread that holds its shape. That's why it's best if it's a day or two old and you definitely wanna go with like a French or Italian bread for this type of torreja. That's what makes it different along with that wine and this gorgeous syrup that we are creating. So it's been 15 minutes since I turned it on. I'm going to now turn it off and you're going to notice it's still a bit runny but that is totally normal because this syrup is going to continue to set as it cools down it's going to thicken up and it's going to be so good i can't with the smell it's amazing i'm just going to take it off the heat and focus now on the torrejas so i have my beautiful mixture i brought over my pan nice and large with a lot of surface area and i'm adding three tablespoons of that vegetable oil or your preferred oil. And then I'm just kind of move it around to cover the surface of the pan. So now I'm gonna give my mixture just one more little mix because you'll notice how the cinnamon always wants to float to the top of the mixture. So I wanna make sure it's well incorporated. Then I'm gonna add in half of the slices of that beautiful bread that I sliced on an angle. So I got 
11 slices after I remove both ends of my French baguette. So I'm gonna do six for my first batch and then I'll do five for my second batch because we don't wanna overcrowd our pan. We want each of these beautiful torrejas to have direct contact with the pan. That'll be nice and hot. It's gonna caramelize and just become beautiful, develop beautiful brown color. So we wanna definitely do it in a couple of batches, of course, depending on the size of the pan that you are using. So now you're gonna to wanna to turn on your stove. I'm gonna go with about a medium heat and we're gonna give it a couple of minutes to warm up and that way the bread can also soak up some of that beautiful mixture and our syrup is thickening up and everything is coming together. So now our skillet is warm. I'm coming in with my beautiful slices that have been swimming in that beautiful mixture that we created and they've been able to absorb so much of that beautiful liquid that's gonna provide so much flavor. And we're gonna put them on our hot pan. It's nice and sizzling. And then, as I said earlier, we wanna make sure we have space in between them. We don't want them crowding each other because we wanna give them a chance to get golden. So what I do is while that first batch is cooking, I grab the second batch and I add those pieces into the liquid mixture. And then I just make sure to flip each piece so that both sides can be exposed to that beautiful yumminess. And then I'm just gonna let them sit in that mixture while I cook the first batch. And that way they'll absorb all that deliciousness and be ready when we are. So I brought over a pan, I'm using a nine by 13 baking dish, just so that I have something that I can serve these beautiful torrejas in. And then I'm coming in and I'm just gonna give them just a gentle little press. I just wanna help them become beautiful and caramelized and develop that gorgeous golden color that we're looking for. Look at how beautiful these torrejas are looking already and they smell so so good so yes my pan has some hot spots or should i say my stove has some hot spots always on the left side is hotter than the right so you know your stove so of course move your torrejas around because you want to make sure that every single one of them gets an opportunity to get nice and golden so just turn them around as needed move them around in the pan and just make sure that both sides develop this beautiful color. And once they do, then carefully remove them with your spatula and place them into your baking dish. These are smelling so good. I can't wait to be done to be able to try them. They're gonna be so delicious. So now I removed my first batch and the second batch has absorbed all of that liquid. The first batch is looking gorgeous. And then I'm just gonna come in and add about another two tablespoons of oil. There's still a little oil left in my pan, so I'm going with about two tablespoons this time because I still have a little left over for my first batch. And then I'm just gonna do like before, just kind of swoosh it around and then give it a moment to just warm up a bit. And once I've let it warm up, then I'm gonna come in here with the rest of the slices of my beautiful torrejas. I'm gonna place them right into the skillet. And see, we absorbed all of that liquid that we created with one beautiful loaf of French bread. There was nothing left in that bowl. And now we're just gonna allow these to get golden, just like we did before. Give them each contact with this beautiful hot skillet then turn them over so that they become golden on both sides. And then once we've accomplished that, our beautiful syrup is ready so that these guys can get drenched in that yumminess and it's gonna be so crazy good. So my second batch is looking beautiful. The color is spectacular. I'm removing them from my hot skillet I'm turning off my stove and I'm focusing on my syrup that's had a chance to thicken up.
So now you have two options. You can pour the syrup over your torrejas if you're gonna be serving this immediately, or you can pour your syrup instead into a container such as this gravy boat that I'm gonna be using so that you can serve the syrup over each portion of torrejas. So I'm gonna add my aromatics because I don't wanna lose those. They're just so beautiful and flavorful and they're gonna continue to infuse my syrup with such amazing flavor as the syrup continues to set. And it's really gotten so much thicker. It even has a little bubble <laughs> that's formed on top. And I just love the way the cinnamon stick and the star anise and lemon peel just kind of float on the top. It looks so absolutely gorgeous and picturesque. <laughs> I love it. And we do eat with our eyes first. It's beautiful, it's aesthetically pleasing. And look at those gorgeous torrejas. They're nice and golden. They're just perfect. And this way you can pop that tray in the oven if you wanna heat it up and serve it at a different time. And you don't have to heat it up in the syrup so that you don't mess with the beautiful syrup. So I am going to serve myself a slice. Of course, my favorite part of all of my videos is getting to sample. And I'm just gonna pour some of the beautiful syrup that we created right on top. So absolutely delicious, flavorful, aromatic. This is just so special that touch of white wine that we use when making our torrejas and this beautiful syrup infused with those beautiful flavors of cinnamon, star anise, and lemon peel. Mm. <laughs> I'm salivating. Absolutely beautiful. The inside is perfect. The outside is golden. It's just going to be perfect. Mm. So good. <laughs> so tasty. It's perfect. It never lets me down. It's just the perfect consistency, beautifully golden on the outside and on the inside. It's just fluffy and delicious. And of course, let's not forget that gorgeous, delicious syrup that we poured on top. It's just perfect. It's perfectly sweet. Mm, super yummy different so tasty just so so good i can't get enough i'm going in for another bite it's just absolutely divine i know you're gonna love this so so good mm. so how crazy good do these torrejas and almibar look they are so delicious they smell absolutely incredible the aroma is just filling up my house right now because those incredible aromatics that we used when creating that syrup just smell incredible they smell like special occasion they smell like holiday and the taste is fantastic but don't think that you need to save this recipe for a holiday this recipe is good for any time you saw how easy it was to put together it's super delicious and you are going to love it Trust me, no, better yet, don't trust me. You're gonna have to try to make this recipe yourself. And of course, if you've enjoyed today's recipe, don't forget to subscribe to Sally That Girl in the Kitchen if you haven't done so already. And of course, remember to like the video, write a sweet comment, share it with your friends. And of course, you can also follow me on social media. I am Sally That Girl in the Kitchen on Facebook, Instagram, and on Pinterest. And I am Sally That Girl FL on Twitter, Snapchat, and on TikTok. So that way, if you ever have a question for me or just so you know what's going on in my kitchen, you can find out there. Thank you so much for watching. I really want to take a moment to thank all of you, especially those of you who watch me all of the time. I've reached some pretty exciting milestones on Sally That Girl in the Kitchen over the last few weeks, and I'm really excited about it. So thank you again for always stopping by, watching, sending me a little sweet message. I really appreciate it. Thank you again for all that you do, and I'll see you next time. Sally that girl in the kitchen.